You found London Taxi Radio, the station for London's taxi drivers. Good afternoon, cabbies and cabets. My name is Sean Paul Dane. You are listening to London Taxi Radio. Where do I begin with this one? Taxi App. Taxi App was founded in 2016. It was initially funded by about 10 cabbies and subsequently funded by drivers paying £20 per month. Now, the idea of Taxi App came at a time when Get was treating drivers as though they were mere commodities and started chopping heavily into our fare structure. And Taxi App was all about reclaiming work and handing back control to the drivers. It was meant to be a cooperative. And it was even sold to drivers as having provisions in place to prevent drivers from assembling and agreeing to sell it to outside investors. It was seen, if nothing else, as a potential insurance policy for the trade. Now, fast forward to February the 14th, where there was a presentation to encourage drivers to vote to move Taxi Out from a cooperative-based model over to an investor partnership. All's very well, I hear you say. Well, apparently it isn't. With Taxi App, the drivers were always meant to be the bottom line. And now suddenly it is set to be controlled by an outside investor who, along with four self-appointed directors and an MD, will collaboratively own the majority share. I say suddenly because it all seemed to come out of the blue and shockingly it was orchestrated behind the backs of those who favoured the cooperative by people who are now pursuing a commercial venture. The problem I have is that we've seen this happen many times in our trade, haven't we? Initiatives that have been started by people with very good intentions, at some point, hegemony at the top ensues, and the concept is replaced by another concept that is more about being a vehicle to make money. And it seems, as night follows day, this is what has happened with Taxi App. To me, what is important is clarity before agreement. When we disagree, it's important to see why we disagree and what those disagreements are. As far as Taxi App is concerned, clarity and discussion have been bypassed in its entirety. And not only that, those who favour the cooperative, who have been part of the Taxi App steering group since its inauguration, have been suspended or laid off. And even long-term subscribers claim that they have been muted or removed from forums simply for asking questions. It's not an exaggeration to say a lot of drivers feel as though they have been utterly betrayed. There is no doubt that those who are set to gain from the new investor partnership have handled this situation atrociously. Stymieing drivers' voices is not the way to go. And it's got to be said, poignant questions still remain unanswered. So I met up with Scott Wolsey and Paul Harris, both steer group members from the beginning, to get the opposing take on what has happened to Taxia. So join us to hear about Taxia, the untold story. OK, I'm joined now by Scott Wolsey and Paul Harris, both respective Taxi App steering group members and have been a steering group member since the start of Taxi App. Uh, I'd just like to start, Scott, with a discussion about the early days of Taxi App. I'd like to uh, talk about how it got kick-started, what its structure was, but I'd like to rapidly move towards the vote on February the 14th, where it was proposed that Taxi App move from a cooperative based model over to an investor partnership. I'd like to talk about the implications of that and I'd like to talk about where that leaves the cooperative to date. But before we start I've got to lay my cards on the table because I'm not impartial and I was an original Taxi App cooperative director and it would have been my opinion back then and it's my opinion now that any outside investor who has a stake in Taxi App and therefore has a say in the future direction of Taxi App is diametrically opposed to the principles of why Taxi App was set up in the first place. And I'll go even further than that to say that I think it, the way they've gone about it is a betrayal of all those who sold Taxi App as a cooperative. It's a betrayal of everyone who thought there were provisions in place to stop the app from being sold to the highest bidder. And it's a betrayal of everybody who paid £20 a month to make the cooperative work. So that's my position on it. So we'll start, Scott. How did we kickstart Taxi App and what was its structure? Uh, well, we kickstarted Taxi App in 2016, in the summer of 2016. I was invited 
into a group that were looking to to get an app going for, for the trade it was looked to be a trade app uh, while I was invited I quickly I know I, I knew uh, Paul Paul through through other uh, through other um, taxi initiatives uh, and knew he would be a good a good uh, good asset to taxi app going forward he was you know I'd solely had the taxi trade at heart so so we quickly got together we uh, we we group funded uh, uh, to the sum of 250 pounds each uh, that sum was not that wasn't a random sum that was there was a precise sum because that enabled us to buy a white label app driver's app so that we could get the whole thing started just for those that are not overly familiar scott a white label is a product or service that's produced by one company that other companies rebrand or customize uh, by putting their own trademarks on it and it appears as though those companies own it when in fact they haven't had any of the costs of the tech or infrastructure nevertheless a lot of companies use white labels don't they and taxi app was no different until at least they had the funds to develop their own app that's about right isn't it uh, well the, the white label well to start off with i mean it, it's not quite that simple i don't think yeah you know you've got 200 and you know two and a half thousand pounds to to buy a uh, a driver app you've then got to buy a passenger app so so the the, the steer group funded it themselves they ran them then all the steer group had to go out and convince the rest of the trade that this was a good thing you know this was a you know we were creating a new a new app that was going to be owned by the drivers you know not for profit not for sale yeah solely for the benefit of the drivers 100 percent of the fare all of the things that that i myself have continued solely through for the last five and a half nearly six years to do with taxi app and along with most of most of uh, i have to stress most of uh the other the other steer group members and so we've gone out there we've then got 300 drivers on at 20 pounds a month those 300 drivers enabled us to then go and get a passenger app yeah once we had once we had them pro the promise of them being on I, I, to be quite honest, I think I put it on my credit card initially uh, to get the to, to get the passenger app, and I was quickly paid back paid back by all of those members. So those members, that our first founder members, paid for the passenger app. Mm -hmm. That was their part. Yeah, it was our part in getting the driver app. It was our, it was our part in getting the driver app. It was the members' part in getting the the passenger app. I just I just bring you in, Paul, because. I remember we were all very excited about being part of Taxi App in the early days because, uh, I mean, I was very glad that you were both on board because for me, you both uh, had unselfish care for the welfare of this trade. And that was my experience. And also, it was at a time when Uber was encroaching on our market. They still are, incidentally. But also, Get was chopping heavily into our fare structure. And although we didn't see Taxi App as the solution, we certainly saw it as a potential solution to reclaim some of that lost work and put control back into the hands of drivers. I mean, you was there, Paul. It was a very exciting time, wasn't it? 100%, Sean. I, I was working alongside founder members. It was a, a privilege to be invited amongst such a, you know, a, a, a unselfish group of people that wanted what was best for the trade and you're absolutely right it did come at a time it wasn't it wasn't um just by accident that it, this project started in 2016 it was because of what the other apps were doing so you're absolutely correct and we believe that we could have taken taxi app to a level in which it would have gave given much more to the drivers the drivers were forever complaining about all the different encroachments within the apps, the commissions, the private hire, etc. And we didn't believe that it was in the best interest of the taxi trade. And uh, who wouldn't want to endorse something like that? So no, 100%, it was absolutely the right thing to do. I had every confidence in the people that I saw around the table with me, and I, and I, I believed it was the right thing to go with. 
We registered TaxiApp as a company limited by guarantee. We then looked at going through the process of shifting that over to being a cooperative. And we did that. Where did it start going wrong, Scott, do you think? Uh, there was a there was initially a, an a trust issue from, from Hass and Phil with the fact that all other cooperatives had sold their business. You know, the likes of Dialer Cab, Radio Taxis, Comcab. You know, they'd all sold, sold, sold them out to... Uh, to private companies and and Hass and Phil were were resistant to signing over to the cooperative without protections against that. Uh, that's when the, we went to solicitors to find out which was the best way to 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 remedy this problem. Uh, it was it was Russell Cook in Putney. I think uh, I think all three of us were there but we've, at the time. And they come up with the idea of, of having a, a holdings company and a license from a holdings company direct back to a cooperative. So what was the significance of the holding company and, and why was it thought up and with the idea of it being implemented? Well, the, the sole idea of the holdings company was to hold the intellectual property and the app, not to do anything with it, but just to hold it. Yeah, that, i.e. the name of it being a holdings company. It's it's not to make any profit. It's not to to gain any not to gain anything from the cooperative, but but merely as a as a bank to hold it, and that in turn being gifted to the holdings company from from the cooperative when we changed over, it was meant to be licensed back for a, a measly sum of a pound. So again making that contract in you know valueless but giving the cooperative the sole use uh, of, of everything within it um, that in that in turn means the cooperative effectively own an app but can't sell it and that was the the entire reason for the holdings so was that ever ratified between the holding company and the cooperative was it ever ever legally signed off no it wasn't signed off so everything remained in the cooperative uh, when we when we moved over uh, as, as far as I'm concerned you know we moved when, when we was a CLG we, we didn't just we didn't start up a new company we moved one business changed that company's entity and became a cooperative yeah, that is not what's happening now, I, I might add. So, but we then became a cooperative. So the cooperative owned everything at the time. Yeah, we was then meant to sign a, a license agreement with, with the holdings company. Yeah, the holdings company was set up a couple of weeks later. We then looked into the fact of what we own and what we don't own. Uh, we approached Codian, who, who were our a. Uh, our developers of the app that we were using at the time it was then reminded to us uh, because I didn't I was unsure but we then found out most definitely we own the skin of the app we own the the data we own the artwork but we didn't own the source code right and, and the source code is obviously what runs the app itself so so where that, did that where did that leave the relationship or the purpose of the holding company? Uh, well, the purpose of the holdings company was, was less important then. Mm. Right? It, it was less important because the app couldn't be sold. Right? So we were safe. Right? But there, was no, there was no necessity to, to, to go anywhere with it at that particular time. OK, mm. we'll come back to that because it's important. There was a problem with the tech on the app. Though wasn't there? there uh, I, th I don't think it was any surprise to us that there was an infrastructure problem. There was lots of glitches on the app. I don't think it was a surprise to drivers who were trying to use the app on a daily basis. What were the problems there? Uh, I believe, you know, what I've been told is is that when when the when when drivers were registering on the app, our app only allowed a certain a certain number. We it didn't have the facility to have 
every member on the app at the same time, which in turn stopped other drivers from signing on. Others were getting work, others were, wasn't getting work, and then you'd, you'd turn off your app, or you'd, you'd sign off and sign on, and you'd get back on, and effectively someone else would get knocked off when that, when would happen. I think we went to, we were, at the time we went to Tickle Media, mm. and they had a, they had a look at our app. They were, they were, they were initially uh, initiated to to give us a, a branding and a and and a, a and an identity which we really failed. I've, because got, I've got to say as well because I went to the meetings with Tickle Media. Tickle Media was an interesting company in the sense that they was a multimedia company. They shared a, a space and a relationship with uh, PR people and app developers. And they was interesting in the sense that they, their dad, the two guys that run it, their dads were cab drivers. And they used to get a cab via Get, because they were based in Farringdon. They used to get a cab to King's Cross, uh, because they had lots of equipment, pretty much on a nightly basis. And that fare was about six or seven pounds, which it would be. And then it quadrupled in price, because Get was applying their technological fee. And they thought, well, this isn't good value. And it's also not good for the taxi trade. And so they toyed with the idea of developing their own app. Um, and then they was introduced to Taxi App by a dutiful cab driver doing the right thing. And they thought, well, we don't have to change. We don't have to develop our own app because the Taxi App is in existence. Except when they was using the app, they, they discovered there was a technical problem um, with the app itself. And that, like I said, that was no surprise to us. It was no surprise to drivers. And so they reached out to us to have a chat with us about it to see if they could help with uh, sorting it out or marketing because they'd never heard of it. But they quickly identified that the that the tech being used was either dated or incompatible and they wanted to look into the back end of it. And I think a rudimentary investigation by them identified that, that it, it wasn't ever going to work, but they didn't know, without a further investigation, they didn't know whether they had to strip it right back or replace it completely. The problem is, at the time, this was met with a huge amount of hostility by Hass and Phil, who was adamant they didn't want Tickle Media to look into it. Not only that, they didn't want us attending any meetings with them or vice versa. Now, that didn't work for me because I was all, always of the opinion that anybody who was involved in the in, in the steering group could attend any meeting they wanted to attend. Didn't matter that it wasn't your area of expertise, you could attend whatever meeting you wanted to attend. So them turning around to me and saying, right, you, we're not going to a meeting with you and you're not going to a meeting with us. That was that was the catalyst for me pulling out of the app. It was also the catalyst for Mirna and I think it was also influential for Lee Chapman to not be involved in the app. And, and Lee Chapman had dedicated a lot of his time to driver services. So it was a it was a sad day to lose somebody like Lee, but it also meant that uh, we left also. Now, I also understand the reasons why you stayed on. And we've had lots of discussions about this. And Scott, you always turn around to me and to coin a phrase, you say that it was important for you to stay on the app to get Taxi App across the line. That was of paramount importance to you. What do you mean by getting taxi up across the line uh, well getting across the line was to to have all of the technology signed up and within the cooperative it's very important to me that the cooperative had the value and the drivers who who paid towards and supported taxi app you know some drivers may have only supported us for three months some some drivers have supported us from day one and continue to support us but it's all of those p people were given a promise that it was going to be theirs. Whether, and in actual fact, all the trade was given a promise that it was going to be theirs, whether they were on it or not. Mm -hmm. You know, that was the most. That was that was the the sole promise that I wanted to enforce. And it seems that 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 now it's it's um, that promise has been undermined. Yeah, and. And, I've, and 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 been told that it's now good that 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 contract wasn't signed. Yeah. You know, and I was astonished when when, when that was proposed to me. Uh, I I just said, well, how can it be good that that this contract 
is not signed and it not being signed is good yeah uh, and then I was told well you'll see uh, and, and when pushing on it you know so it gives us options and and we see the options that have, have that have come about for people who who are who are members to be quite honest they, they might not recognize themselves as members they like might say oh well I'm not a member now I'm not a driver you know they try to give themselves another title but under a cooperative they would have had to have been a member mm-hmm. uh, and now they're trying to, to, to sort of elevate themselves whereas under a cooperative we're all we're all the same and that's most important to me but I, but I also think when when you ask the question about getting getting the app over the line Sean it was because the founder members everyone when we sat around the table there was this promise and it was about the app never being sold it mm-hmm. was about never going over to Pro the higher mm-hmm. it was always about being used by the taxi driver it was always in the interest of the taxi driver when we started seeing you know these founder members through mistrust through not being clear about what direction that was going and these these kind of very subjective things around steer group members going to meetings and I think as you so rightly say if, if I'm happy to give up my time to go to a meeting that's in the best interest of tax app and the trade why 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 shouldn't I go I absolutely agree with you all these things trigger mistrust yeah, of course and yes. what what you found was that that whole concept of the collective was slowly dim- diminishing because yeah. these these steer group members started to lose the confidence in what they actually initially got involved with the app for yeah and it almost felt like there was this resistance from the two founder members Oh well, our original, or not our original white label app, the app that we went forward on and got developed for us, mm. but didn't own the source code. Yeah. Um, w- when we put the when we put the uh, the new the new skins on the app, basically gave it taxi apps, you know, its its proper identity. Uh, those issues which were highlighted from Tickle, uh, has. Hass went to developers and told them that you know this is what's wrong, blah blah blah. And there was there was there was a list there was a list of problems wrong with the app. And we had always had a uh, a provision that that any upgrade would need to be endorsed by the memberships because we had to be able to afford it. You can't just have anything happen. But because the app was so. Clunky. Not clunky, clunky, yeah. Not not working as it should have done. Yeah. To be quite honest, it's not what we what we thought we'd bought. Yeah, you know. Um, they then gave it a, a full revamp, and then presented us with a bill of sixteen thousand pounds. Right. Uh, an exceptional bill, considering it we was we was three months into lockdown. Yeah. In August twenty twenty, you know. We, we, we've been presented with this this extortionate um, extortionate bill. I must admit, the app started to work perfectly. Okay. You know, it, 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 but that was on their behalf. They done the work that was needed. Yeah. So, how did that bill get paid? That bill, well, the bill was meant to have been paid. We how how we how we were meant to have paid it 
we 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 got into discussion we was not happy with the fact that they presented it to us without us endorsing the work and as i said the work was definitely needed for it to happen for the app to work properly so it wasn't the the quality of the work it was the fact that it was presented to us on, on an affordability basis i think the, i think the, initially the contract was was that anything ab- above and beyond a thousand pounds would have had to have been confirmed to to taxi app mm. before the payment was made right. so i think that was the initial issue that we had so taxi app still has an outstanding payment to make oh uh, yes 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 it does there, there's a sixteen thousand pound bill there uh for 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 the app that's that's that ceased it wasn't it wasn't right. an agreed okay. amount it wasn't an agreed amount yeah but it was presented to yeah. us okay has then come forward and said well i don't want to pay it right yeah uh this was, was this a collaborative decision there, 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 there was four of us in the room there, right. was, there, there was four of us in a virtual room um has has come forward he goes no i don't want to pay it they you know they're having us over a barrel here you know that that's that's far too much and he was forever trying to try, trying to reduce the amount. Uh, Phil was in agreement with him. Paul and myself were very. Well, we're we're of the basis of. You pay what's due. Yeah. You know that's the that's the way I work. You know, it, you might not like it, but that's that's what that's what that's what was necessary. But it's not good business to end up with a bad debt. No, no, it's, not at all. And not at all. And it's also not a good idea to actually work with developers in India, not knowing that they could be in dialogue with other developers yes, and say, course, "Well, look, you yes. know what? Actually, watch these guys. They don't pay their bills." It, it, and it's, it's, it's a possibility. It might even be the same company. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But yeah. it was, you know, from from what Scott's saying is, it was on our part. We didn't believe it was the right thing to do. What we would have. Uh, agreed on is possibly paying back bit part payments because yeah. we would you know because of getting hit with such a big bill but of course if you want so to they're not paid, they're not I, I wasn't the I wasn't comfortable in not paying the bill so they've uh, not paid the bill we now come we come to an agreement well, what happened was is you know the four of us have got there Paul's not happy I'm not happy and then you've got Hass and Phil that's saying well no we don't want to pay it and then and then you're saying well how are we going to get around this uh because because we've got to pay him because we've got to, we've got to move forward and and has on that part has come forward and said well i can get a new app for eighteen thousand pounds with all the bells and whistles on it how uh, much would you say scott just roughly the not the brand new app the one that you is now defunct how much would you say was spent on that app over the period of years I, I would say it's, it's got to be around fifty thousand pounds. At least fifty thousand pounds. So I couldn't give you the exact. Yeah, I, I've no longer got pounds. access to the accounts to 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 uh, yeah, to, to, to crunch all of that yeah. together. I, I could possibly get that at a, a later date if you. No, if no, so but, but fifty thousand pounds. And now the idea that you can build a new app that will have bells and whistles on it that will be faultless for eighteen thousand pounds. Isn't that a little bit unrealistic? Well, I thought it was. I thought it was unrealistic, but I'm assured by our tech man mm, yeah. that, that this is, you know, this is what they can do. This is what he's been promised. You know, it would have had geofencing on it, uh, nearest cab. The, these are the things that were most essential to me was nearest cab and the geofencing, which which enabled us to go nationwide yeah. with, with the app, bring on yellow badges which is what I've always wanted to do from the beginning because because you can't have a real trade app without having everyone on it yeah. or, or the ability to have everyone mm-hmm. on it. Uh, so on that essence is what swayed me to go with to go with the new developer and and uh, eventually we come to the agreement that 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 would that would have been the way to go. Yeah. And well that's what we did do. That isn't what what we should have or what we uh and it's fair to say that the app doesn't work that well. The app doesn't work. Doesn't work. That, I think that that is it. it. You know, an app only works if it works in its entirety. Yeah. Yeah. If it doesn't work in its entirety, it doesn't work. And if we look at who now owns this new app, who owns it? That is a very good question. Um, 
The first two down payments were made directly from the cooperative to the new developers, and they are called Suntech. They they were two instalments. We had one in uh, the end of August for three thousand pounds, and another one shortly in 2021 for another three thousand pounds. Uh, so with so as far as I was aware, we'd paid six thousand pounds. Uh, also, when we moved from a limited company, we we or taxi at the CLG, and we everything was was moved over to the cooperative. We had Amazon AWS servers in the building of this new app, and the and because of time differences and things like that, it was explained to me it would be better for us to have new server providers in the UK. Uh, Phil went to see them in Soho. He seemed to think be very confident of, of what they could do. And he said, we can transfer the, the data from Amazon over to the new server providers with the new app. Now, I, I was fully confident of a of a contract being signed, a, le a license agreement that would have signed that back straight into the cooperative. But it seems that is when the data has been removed from the cooperative ownership and over to another company of, of which I don't know whose name is on it. Yeah, it was not divulged to me. I was presumed, it was a presumption it was within the cooperative. I wouldn't have no reason to think anything different, but is this why Phil seems so confident that he owns the data because he's effectively taken it away from the cooperative and put it somewhere else and put his name on top, his name on top of it, you know, without an endorsement to say that is that it is his. Yeah, that is that is the most part. There's no endorsement there to say that it belongs to anyone else. It is merely, as I would say, you are carrying the luggage in someone else's car. Yeah, mm. It is not your luggage, it is the cooperative's luggage. Although it went very quiet during lockdown, there was a lot of operational planning going on in the background to shift Taxi App from being a cooperative over to an investor partnership. How involved in that process were you? About as much as that silence you had just then. <laughs> and that comes from both of us. Really? Absolutely. What's your current positions within Taxi App? At the moment, I am a suspended steer group member, stroke possible director. Um, who's to say what's going on within Taxi App at the moment? I was suspended mid mid uh, January, uh, just prior to the to the uh, proposal getting getting forwarded to the members that stopped me from being present at the at the proposal at the presentation to give any alternative um, view or, or cooperative value to 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 then moving over um, it, it was that made it a one-sided proposal uh, even though, as I think I've already stated, that that it was a, a non-cooperative vote that allowed it to happen. Also, it meant I had no sight of the bank to see what payments have been made. Yeah, I I have now had no no vote or or sight of any decisions because I'm you know as 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 a steer group member, the only one who's in favour of the cooperative. So to, to, to have any any oversight of any decisions that are being made has been taken away from the members. And, and I think that's a travesty in itself. What's your position, Paul, on this? Uh, yeah, so uh, very early in, in, in the beginning of this year, I was also suspended. And then for some reason, that suspension was with, withheld and they said, no, you know, obviously your suspension doesn't exist anymore. So I asked, could I have access to all the parts that I had an involvement with in Taxi App? And I received a just a very direct email from uh, Taxi App 
via Martin Franks telling me that you haven't done nothing for the for tax app in the last year or so um, and you're no longer required we haven't got a position for you and I found that I found that quite insulting because um, like I say I was a, a, a you know much in favor of the cooperative and it was always about transparency and informing members and I felt that you know this was a real failing on their part because they didn't they didn't want any connection to the cooperative yeah and one of the biggest problems I have now with it is there is no oversight so there is no trade oversight they own collaboratively with the outside investor the majority share and beforehand the cooperative was the oversight and now that's the problem because there is no oversight well I think that actually came from me and Scott if anything more so from Scott because Scott in a, in a role as a director and you know fundamentally um, through Scott's passion within the cooperative about what it meant for the drivers and particularly for the trade because they both work, work you know run alongside each other the really important factor for that is is that they wanted to strangle the cooperative side of the app and there you're absolutely right there wasn't no one that they weren't accountable to anybody it was literally they could do what they wanted and they were showing that they they were doing what they were wanted they wanted because of the proposal the way that the proposal was put forward the way that they removed drivers that wanted to ask questions prominent questions about the app about what they're subscribing to all of this meant well actually who actually makes sure that tax app is being run in the best interest of the members and also if the 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 holding company had been ratified the, the, the signing of the holding company had been ratified with a cooperative then they would have been much more limited with what they could have done uh, the, the, except without a doubt I mean it would have tied both the holdings and the cooperative together and the cooperative as in every member would have would have had to have collaborated with the holdings company and agreed if anything was to have changed and that in itself stopped it from 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 the partnership from even being proposed to be quite honest because the contract said that if you if if the if the cooperative were to to have proposed that and gone that way the holdings company could have taken it away from them yeah taken away the use and the contract would would have been with negotiation exactly the same would have happened the other way yeah it is that if the holdings company proposed it we could have then taken it away from the holdings yeah yeah that that was the part of the contract that needed to be negotiated and written in because initially it wasn't done um it was because it wasn't done because the the lawyers hadn't thought of it just yet uh, because it was done on the basis that the holdings were fearful that the cooperative was going to sell it rather than the other way round. Yeah. 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 And, and what we wanted to do during that time, Paul and me were doing nothing. We were looking over that part of the contract and wanted to mirror the same responsibility of the cooperative as well as the holdings. So we both had the same... the, the, the the same penalties for for um, transgressing the contract mm. but, but that's also that's also something that you were saying about um, just about the oversight it's really interesting because we had the original founder members yeah all believing the same purpose the Absolutely. same promise but at the beginning of lockdown I would say I would say this is the operational planning for the investor partnership to move it away from the cooperative has probably been in process for a good at least six months maybe a year who was who do you say who do you think was responsible I mean it might be those it might be collaborative but who do you think was responsible for this and why do you think he wasn't involved in that well Martin Franks didn't didn't want to go over to a cooperative he, he, he wanted to go over to a partnership mm. and he said the cooperative and never work and left you know, you know, he wasn't getting what he wanted from it because, as we can already see, a partnership is not is not a, is not an equal partnership. 
there it, it's 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 animal farm it's we're all equal but i'm more equal yeah. than you well it's interesting because martin franks came on board when i was involved and it certainly changed the dynamics of the steering group quite significantly we didn't particularly get on that well and he subsequently left and when i left he came back on board so what was his proposed involvement the second time round? Initially, his proposed involvement was to get business accounts. He, he, he come forward to us saying, "Oh, we're not, we're not doing the LinkedIn enough." He then come forward and asked whether he wanted to do a driver Facebook and having experience and of Martin on Facebook prior. I immediately said no because he caused problems elsewhere with that. And. Um, I said, well, if he's going to go and get work, fine. That's I've got no problem with a member getting work for Taxi App. It then transpired that he'd get work for a percentage, and and I was vehemently against that because we're a hundred percent of the fare to the driver, and and there was no way that I was going to accept that. It then, and again, Martin Franks has come forward. All of this is is via Phil, of course, and. And he said, well, Martin said he'll get us business accounts. He's got business accounts lined up for us. He's got work for us. But he'll only do it if he gets a position as a director of the board. And the only the only person ever that has demanded to be on as a steer group member for, for, for his own benefit. You know, the only person to have ever have demanded anything from Taxi App was mine for the promise of work. None of which has turned up. You know, we we had one we had one advertisement with the Kingsman, mm. uh, and Taxi App ended up paying for it. You know, ended up paying for the for the super sides on the side of the vehicles. There was no benefit to Taxi App from any work that Martin has brought to So none of himself. that, none of those promises materialised. But he now has a seven percent share in Taxi App. Well, he has a seven percent share in Taxi App because he's the percentage man. Right. Yeah, he's the man that wants to facilitate a percentage off of the drivers to benefit the few. You know, it's the it's, it's the percentages only come off of the drivers yeah you no longer when you're on percentages you no longer own something you work for someone and 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 martin wants to transfer it to that as i said you know within the cooperative his business was to get business accounts nothing else he then moved over and said well we haven't got secondary rules and things you know the, the type of the business needs to be sorted out and Scott you need to go and do that and Scott you need to go and do this and my feeling was well it's not essential until we come out of lockdown where we can consult the members properly have a rules review committee let the drivers endorse everything that we do and agree to it and then go forward Martin's idea was to to bring it forward do it himself in mold it in a position where where he's got control and anyone else going up he has full control of that as well whereas i'm of the feeling yes secondary rules are definitely necessary you know the way we use the the app was definitely necessary but it needs to be done in conjunction with the endorsement and the involvement of the members themselves for them, it's no point putting on a rule which the drivers don't agree to. You know, they've got to they've got to endorse what what we do. So, when did you first find out that they was planning to change the very structure of Taxi App? Definitely, or or, or get inklings. There, there, there is a difference. Yeah, there, there is okay. a difference there. Okay. Uh, I, I got. Well, ink- we can cover both. Yeah. Uh, so. Definitely something was going to change. I found out two weeks prior um, to the the, yes, the the special meeting on the 14th of February. As a, as a steer group member, that's when I found out two weeks prior. So I wasn't involved in anything prior to then. And we had a vote on that. Um, 
we was told we've got to have our decision within two hours of of a of a uh, of a proposal that, that all the members see on the 14th of February. That mm-hmm. was presented to us in, in a meeting two room. Two weeks notice. So something that's been up in planning for about seven or eight months. Um, because I read the proposal, they basically, when we look at it, it's a it's a John Lewis copy and paste. It's customised, but it's a John Lewis copy and paste, and that's not without that's not without issues. I've worked it's for a, John Lewis. Oh right. I've worked I worked for Waitrose during during the lockdown. Yeah. You know, uh, I was couldn't get. Well, more to the point, there was drivers that had to be out there, and I didn't want to break bread with them, taking work away from them, and yeah. I and I managed to get work elsewhere, and I know. The way that the, the partnership works, and I've spoken to the drivers and the and the people that work within it, and they're not they're not hundred percent happy with it. Well, two years ago, the cleaners took John Lewis to court and won because they were being underpaid. Exactly, so it's that. not a harmonious relationship. No, by far. it's not an even. It's not a. It's not an even business and taxes. For 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 what anyone says, we all do exactly the same job. Yes. Yeah, yeah. we're very unique in that everyone does exactly yeah. the same job. There's no one elevated above anyone else when you're a taxi driver. Well, on the face of it, they've used drivers' money to significantly restructure the business model. But even if we put that aside, they don't adequately define their vision or reason for existence beyond simply being a vehicle to make money for themselves. And this is what happens in the trade, isn't it? You quite often get a lot of drivers get involved in different initiatives who have very good intentions, but somewhere down the line, opinions divaricate, disunity instills, and those people that got on board in the first place with very good intentions either leave or are sidelined. And that is exactly what has happened to you, because you haven't been involved in the negotiations, you haven't been involved in the strategy or the process of moving the app to an investor partnership. And I'll go on record as saying you are both Two of the most honourable people I have ever met in my life. And it is a travesty that you have been sidelined and excluded in the way that you have been. And so the issue for me now is, looking further into it, that the driver's voting block share will never be enough to counter a combined 58% voting block that will have the power and persuasion to mould the app in the way that they see fit. For example... I know there are certain vetoes in place, but I don't think there's a veto in place to stop drivers from assembling to sell the app, a.k.a. dial a cab. And that was the whole point of the holding company in the first place, wasn't it? And you have to wonder what happens when the initial wave of investment invariably runs dry and the owners then have to consider diluting the initial shareholding. These are questions that should have been answered before the proposal was made and the vote took place on the 14th of February. Drivers have got a say in everything in the partnership as long as they agree with the partnership. Yes. And that is that is the way that they're working. It is, yeah, you know, you can have whatever you want as long as we agree to it. <laughs> that is so. So if you ask for something that that they don't agree to, you're not getting it. Mm. Simple as. Mm. Is is that your point? Are you you. We, Sean asked about when we first knew about the proposal that was the first time we knew about the partnership but you also said we also you know understand about the inkling that we had yeah well, that I, was I had an inkling where I was I was put forward to a meeting and it was it was to do with percentages yeah now I'm I'm against percentages but if the drivers voted for it I would go I would go with it mm. you know it, it's it's the drivers that have to say but then they then it was sort of like muted well uh, you know uh, about changing changing uh, would you be would you be in favor of doing something different and i uh, and i prick in my ears prickled up and said most definitely not i said you know we've got a contract to sign that puts everything over to to the uh you know that, that signs signs um ownership to the holdings and the sole use back to the cooperative and and phil come forward well it might be good that we haven't signed that yet uh, and i i immediately questioned him how can that be better for the drivers mm-hmm. and he goes well it gives us options mm-hmm. and when i pressed on options 
he said well it just gives us options right okay yeah, yeah you know it, it was there was no definitive there uh, and, and, and I'm thinking well, well what's go, what's going on here uh, but obviously in my naivety uh, I thought the cooperative was still safe in, in its in its form as it was because there was no other app that's turned up yeah any payments towards that app would need to be authorized by the cooperative and and when the production of that app what should happen is yeah we'll pay the last payment and everything goes back to the cooperative that has not been done right that is where that is where this app now has taken it's been the vehicle to remove all of the property of the cooperative this that's what this new app has done by them not signing a contract okay that's really interesting so considering they've breaking that sorry Sean okay. breaking the promise that was given yeah, to absolutely. every every member that had paid in prior so where does it leave taxi app now and what can be done where does it leave taxi app now and, and what 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 do you require of them well, what I require of of the members of the cooperative. Uh, no, what do you require of the self-appointed directors that look to be steering this uh, taxi up in a certain direction now? Well, they what they initially need to do is is keep their promise uh, of of signing everything over to the cooperative. Yeah, lock, stock, and barrel. Yeah, that's the that's the cooperative's property yeah they've paid yeah, for, they've it, they've yeah, paid for it. it they've for worked it. for it they've done everything for it yeah you might have a self-entitled position and you feel that you own more but you didn't have to be there yeah you're yeah. there through choice you're yeah. not you're no one's compelling you to do what you're doing you're there through choice yeah you're there through choice to work for the collective yeah so give the property back to the cooperative sign it over and then once we're there if the members decide that your proposal is the good way to go then they can possibly decide within the holdings and the cooperative whether that whether that's a possibility yeah but the cooperative should have the strength and mm. what's happened here is the holdings have taken that strength away from the cooperative put us in a weak position and then suggested to go somewhere else why why that possibility was still yeah. available it's been manufactured for this to happen now they had the meeting on the 7th of uh, 14th of february which was valentine's day a convenient time to hold a meeting so they was allowed to propose their option of moving over to an investor partnership there was no one to argue the case for the cooperative do you think that was a fair vote oh, definitely not it wasn't even a cooperative and, and vote. so and so if you challenge that vote what would your process be now and and how would you move forward from that considering the majority of people who voted opted for a commission-based investor partnership what would you do now to challenge that what would i do now well as i said we've already got the possibilities of a cooperative a cooperative app so that gives us in the future that was supposed to be available by June September which seemed a, a very long way away at the time but considering where our app is at the moment and we're in we're nearly in May it's no time at all do you recognize that vote as being a valid vote under cooperative rules no not at all no but no, I also but, but, it, 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 uh, the reason being the reason being there Sean is that you're meant to give prior notice uh, two months beforehand and two months beforehand for, for a change of business like that mm. it, it's because it's not a cooperative vote it's not just sort of like on percentages if it's on percentages you can give two weeks notice but because you're changing entity you need two months notice and when that meeting was made everything was need to have been put forward then so members could deliberate and 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 discuss yeah prior to that that vote what were the legal implications behind the vote on february the 14th cooperatively um the vote was put towards us we was told that we had two hours to vote on this 
and and it was via a WhatsApp room. Uh, I immediately voted against it, and the other the other steer group members voted in favour other than Paul uh, Paul abstained right at the end believing his vote to be not 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 worthy because it, there was a landslide majority against me now none of those that were going to get a benefit from it are allowed to vote you know they're, they're, there's four directors in there mm. uh, Martin Franks Damian Wakeman, Hassan Chalf, and Phil Faringo should be ex- should be exempt from that vote. They should have no say in what going forward, what should be proposed to the members, because they all all of those four were going to gain from it, uh, and they were going to gain from it via a percentage within the partnership. So they should be exempt. That would have left Paul and myself. And another member who wanted to be anonymous, who I believe shouldn't vote because of that, yeah, which is Jay Nicola. Right. Yeah, he's no longer anonymous uh, because he actually voted. Yeah, you can't be anonymous and vote for anything within a cooperative. That's just that's just not the way it works. So uh, legally, the only people that could vote on it was you and Paul. Yes. And and when we've voted against, or Paul's abstained, or I've voted against, that that in itself should have stopped it there and then. Now, now I might have been be able to be swayed to put it towards the the, the membership because in that way I would have gone to the membership and say, look, you've got all of these guys. Let them turn up at driver meetings. Let them put it forward to them. Let the drivers then decide whether they want that proposal to come forward. Yeah, and then once the drivers have decided yay or nay to its validity then it can be put forward again but to be forced upon us is definitely un, is definitely undemocratic and 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 wrong it, it, it's, it's not it's not correct underneath the cooperative rules do you not think that in some ways the investor partnership has been overshadowed somewhat by the idea of moving taxi up from a subscription based model over to a commission based model and the emphasis on that is what drivers were actually voting on, as opposed to voting on the investor partnership. Most definitely. I mean, you know, Martin Frank's come up with uh, £80. It's going to cost £80 per, per member to run did, the app. Where did he get that figure from? And is it a legit figure to oh, run with? Without a doubt, it's not a legitimate figure. Okay. You know, it, well, that would frighten people, wouldn't it? That would of frighten course it drivers. would. Of course it would. You know, £80 for what, Martin? Yeah? How, there was that was just plucked out, put down in front of the members. So we're going to charge you eighty pounds, or we're going to charge you percentage on those free jobs that you do this mm. this week. Mm. Yeah, it, it it was it was a carrot and a great big stick. Yeah. Well, it yeah. wasn't it wasn't even just a, it wasn't just a, pro- a proposal. It was a presentation. Yeah. About a different business. It wasn't completely. In, it wasn't done in a democratic way for members to be very clear about what this meant for a nap that was going in only one direction as the original you know idea came came about yeah. and this start this started to change and i think also um you did ask a, a, a question a little bit earlier and I, i'm sorry just to go back on that but it was a talk, you was talking about the time regarding our involvement within the process of them changing yes. over to this partnership yeah. you know where they found the time to do all this Sean it's something I have to ask questions about because if they were also running the app as it was at the time and were also looking at building this partnership and it was quite evident that me and Scott were very much against this because as Scott has already said we were always about this app not being sold yeah that was the promise that was always one of the key reasons I needed to be here to the very end and what 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 only was the, pro- the not only was the proposal very detrimental it, 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 it worked against the whole premise of what a cooperative was about. It was almost like they kind of painted the cooperative as a total failure. And all the all of them that were proposing this partnership never really got behind the cooperative. Yes, there isn't right. any there isn't a period never. in the six years of any of them being involved that I recall any of them going, let's really give this a go. Yeah. Let's really give this they a go. They were push. quite happy for drivers to go down ranks and sell the app as a cooperative owned and run app to get drivers on board and and again that's a really interesting point because 
why didn't Phil and Hass address any of the found members and go, well, actually, I think you've got it wrong. Yes. You've, you've got it wrong. You've misread what this app is about. This is what we own. This is what we're happy to give the trade. But this is our trade-off for the trade to get this. Yeah. There was never a time any of us, any of the founder members, if any of them can come forward and say, well, actually, guys, I think you've all got this wrong. Someone, There's, there's no way none, none of the founder members would, would have kind of misinterpreted what tax app was about. Yes, it's yes, not It's certainly. not coincidental that everybody that got involved in tax app, other than Phil and Hass, yeah. had a completely different direction. For me, that is massively clear. And as, as Scott said, you know, they they have absolutely betrayed the taxi trade in the way that they've conducted themselves. Yeah. Absolutely, 100%. Look, I understand uh, the disgruntlement, and I know, Paul and Scott, you're very passionate. You're calling for a special general meeting now, aren't you, Scott, to try and sort Peter this Keenan out. Peter Keenan is calling for a special general meeting. We had, we had, which transpired to be an unofficial driver meeting because the board of directors wouldn't endorse it, wouldn't turn mm. up. And Peter Keenan proposed that we, we have a special general meeting for the board of directors to answer questions. And if those questions are not answered su sufficiently for them to be removed. Right. And what's the potential of that actually happening? Well, we're going to need at least 80 members to to agree to that special general meeting. Mm -hmm. And the the board of directors once we've got those 80 members would then have to organize a meeting within two weeks if they don't organize a meeting within two weeks the meeting itself can organize one for seven days later for, for them to attend but it's essential that members current members still paying members sign sign for that special meeting and attend and vote and and for all members to decide the direction of Taxi App, not the way that it's been done at the moment, is that we were railroad through in a non-cooperative presentation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we've no alternatives. We've 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 no we've no real input from from the drivers prior. You know, we've 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 an unfettered access to those that were asking the questions and and how they would be presented to them you know we needed to be for something so important something for five and a half years to be decided in in two weeks uh, yeah is abhorrent is abhorrent because of our consideration for the members yeah what we what me and scott was very much opposed to was the email that we both received from Taxi App telling us not to vote against the partnership. Yeah. And oh. that 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 for me just it just said more about yeah. their actions and their behaviour. And just just going to the point about why members should be interested in getting this special general meeting is so they can be clear about exactly what Tax App's intentions are, so they know exactly where it's going, where it began and any prominent questions they feel they need to ask because I, I, I'm I quite confident that the average member that has been completely supportive of Taxi App are not clear. Yeah. There's no there's no narrative for them to, to actually look at and go, yep, yeah, we can see where, where this is going and we can see why this has changed. There's nothing there. The communication is non-existent so th to the point the only way members actually got information about failings within the app and, and any kind of updates was through, um, you know, forums that were yes, were created. Yeah, yeah. And when all this started going a bit a bit messy, myself and Scott were putting valid messages in those forums to inform all the members. And by the way, we put those in rooms where the board of directors were were also, so they could hear these messages. There was nothing hidden from me and Scott. We believe that anything that goes out. But it seems go out to anybody it. that has criticised Taxi App or what is happening with Taxi App, be it the app or the investor partnership, they've been systematically removed from these forums, Remuved, haven't they? Muted, you know, you you you're not you're not being able to impart your opinion 
or, or, or any facts that you might want to furnish people with, you've just been excluded. I mean, these are these are paying members that are being excluded. Yes, indeed. Yeah, yeah, I've I've got I've had phone calls and messages to say, Scott, I've been removed from from the from the the taxi app forum, and then when we've gone gone forward and questioned them about it, it's now been said to us, well, they're not official taxi app rooms. Okay. <laughs> so, so they're trying to uh, they're trying to say, well, that's got nothing to do with taxi app. Yeah. That's not official. When, when you consider these were these were promoted within taxi app with via the app via messages to join these WhatsApp rooms, and they've been saying that they're not official. I can't see how that's a, how that's the case. And and what's incredible about this, Sean, is the fact that these are paying members. Mm-hmm. They've contributed to getting tax act to where it is yeah. right now. It's not for me or Scott to decide the direction they want to take tax act. Yeah. What they need is the information, and they need the for and against. They it shouldn't everything shouldn't be in agreement if there's something to disagree with. And a forum is about asking questions, and more pertinently, it's about those questions being answered. That's the whole point of a forum. Well, the thing is, is the question could be could be quite easily answered. Yeah. And if it's, and if it's the, you know, if someone's been given the wrong information, it could be dispelled, yeah, yeah. And, and you go forward. But but likewise, if it's something that that they they haven't thought of, they can think, oh, hang about, we need to rethink this. But what it is, they're on they're on a, they're on a train, and they're going in one direction. And if you're not on that train, you're being alighted as it goes along. Yeah. You know that they don't want you. They're not interested in in those that have that have built this this train. I just want some final thoughts because we've got to wrap this up. I just want some final thoughts from both of you about how you feel about what has happened, and also about the people involved in what has happened. So just some final thoughts on this. Well, I feel totally betrayed. That is it. I feel totally betrayed in the way that that. They've spoken to others, yeah. You know, I feel totally betrayed for the drivers. Yeah, that, that's more to the point. I can, if if it was going a different direction and I didn't agree with it and I was moved on, fine, that's me. Yeah, but the drivers have been betrayed from the beginning to now for someone else to benefit because they are not benefiting from it. Yeah, they are not getting the platform that they deserve, the work that they deserve. For for the for the control and the and the security that the app was meant to bring within our trade is now being given away because we it's now being given away to another corporate which will do whatever it wants for profit. It needs a profit within the cooperative. That wasn't essential. It was about our working practices, and now they're about to be run straight over again. It's been given away, or it's been taken away. By, by those that would betray people they would work with for six years and look at each other in the eye across a room. Uh, they're completely untrustworthy in any of the decisions that they make. I, myself personally, am, I feel betrayed as well. I'm more angry for what I've always sold to the drivers. As you put earlier, Sean, you know, we, we were pretty much the face of going down the ranks with yourself and Myrna. We, we were never told otherwise so why wouldn't we feel this was a total betrayal it's a bit like a door-to-door salesman coming to your door saying you've got this policy you pay it every month and don't worry when you retire and then finding out when you retire actually know that policies it's nothing it's nothing you thought it was to mm. actually to actually look in the eyes of taxi drivers that work bloody hard and care about this trade and uh, by the way a lot of the drivers didn't even put the app on be- but That's they right. truly believed in what it was about and, and how they felt it was going to change the dynamics of what these apps were doing. All these things were fundamental reasons why the founder members got together. And it would be an absolute tragedy if these four board of directors, and I've got no angst against them as individuals, as a working as a business, I'm really sorry. That's how they saw it. This was not a business venture for me. When I got involved, like everybody else, it wasn't about money. So for me, they need to be removed and everything needs to be given back to, you know, to the, to the actual members 
of the cooperative. And if they want to go off and do their own business venture, then that's fine. But I don't want part of that because that's not what I got involved in. I didn't do this for individuals to benefit. I've done it for the trade, as, as all the founder members did. And I urge every taxi driver that's a member of Taxi App, please make your vote count. Please sign for a special general meeting so that we can get every single question answered. That will clear your mind as to the direction of Taxi App so that you will ultimately make the decision, the direction that Taxi App goes in, not myself or Scott. It will be ultimately down to you. So please take that opportunity, thank you. To, to add to that, Paul, uh, the SGM is for those questions to be answered and they should be answered thoroughly and honestly. And if they're not answered thoroughly and honestly, we need to remove them or propose to a vote to remove those individuals which haven't answered honestly or competently so we can have a new directors within the cooperative and find out what as a collective we own and don't own and if it's being taken away from us the legalities in which it has been taken away i i don't think i can ever forgive phil and Hass and the other two board of directors that are presently in place I can't forgive them either because for me personally they're all party to what's gone on the interest was always about what it meant for the drivers for the members and also more importantly for the trade because this app was representing the trade because of everything else that was going on we seem to have forgotten that and for me my loyalty to Phil and Hass to see this through because of the original founder members that, that had been either removed or stepped back for unknown reasons of course um, and personal reasons didn't stop me from what I believed in and I, I, I was loyal to what we wanted to do and what they done is their betrayal isn't something that I feel I feel it for every single driver that all of us that we we told them and promised them that this was never going to be sold ever be sold that was the key factor for me and more importantly those drivers then went out and they professed that to their customers this is what they told them this was the the unique selling point of tax app that it, you were supporting us while we were supporting you through a great initiative and the greed of the very few have destroyed this and I would never get involved with a trade initiative after this experience because to me if you haven't got something written down in writing which is the greatest tragedy because it should have been done vocally as a trust it, it should have been on that and that's initially how it started the fact that you can't even trust that process now leaves the trade in a much worse a worse place than it was and that is the, the sad thing it's our representation of the trade all the other apps that have been before taxi app was the one that was saying we are standing up for the drivers and phil and Hass have betrayed everyone within the trade and i don't think i i will absolutely struggle to look them in the eye I don't think I would I would much prefer to avoid them for the rest of my my working days I could not get involved in them for what they've done to every single driver and every founder member that I, I, I crossed paths with over the last five and a half years I don't think I've got much to add to that Paul uh, but I'm gonna try um, for me it's the it's the deception it's the it's the deceit that has happened here from day one we've had from from five and a half years ago from July 2016 when we formed we was only ever about the drivers we was only ever about a driver own own platform only ever about us as a collective for others it was not not one person in that room at that time was looking for something above anyone else at that time no one was looking for any benefit above anyone else 
their only interest was to 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 promote taxes to to give us a platform to to look after our business in the future whereas where we see other co corporate businesses running all over us doing whatever they wanted and we wanted to have our own our own as taxi drivers when i say our own it's it's is every taxi driver out there to, to have our own platform, our own say in the business that we run because that is what all those other apps do. They run our business for us and Taxi App was meant to be our say in, in the way that it worked. And this has been taken away from us from a five and a half year deception. It's five and a half years down the line that they've then changed and deceived all of those individuals over three and a half thousand drivers have, have invested in taxi app with 20 pounds at least yeah they have deceived three and a half thousand drivers to to be benefited to themselves it's wrong wholeheartedly it's it's the biggest deception i believe the taxi app trade has ever seen it is wrong and it lies I would say solely with Phil and Hess. OK, you've been listening to Scott Wolsey and Paul Harris. Uh, we'll leave it there for now, guys. There are loads of things that I'd like to add, but I'm absolutely certain that drivers don't want to hear me warble on for all eternity. So what we'll do is we'll put this recording out there and encourage drivers to ask questions on social media. And maybe you can make yourselves available to answer those questions. Maybe Phil and Hass can also make themselves available to answer questions. I've spoken to lots of drivers who subscribe and they all cite a lack of communication. But I do have to say and I have to stress that whatever they say, and it doesn't matter if they criticise this recording, it doesn't matter if they castigate us, because it is too late. They should have made themselves available before the vote took place on February the 14th. That's it for me, guys. Have a great day and I'll look forward to seeing you all out there on the other side.